Hey kids, welcome to unit one, lesson 14, background painter, exercise number three. In this exercise, we're gonna finish off our background painter subclass. Let's jump into the exercise for today. We are going to import our pattern painter Java file from our backpack. And if you remember, we did commit that at the end of the lesson. So I know I'm not going to need to get a copy, but if you do, just click there. And then we're going to instantiate or create a pattern painter object called my pattern painter. Then we're going to instantiate a background painter object called my background painter. And we're going to use the pattern painter and the background painter objects to create a mural. Hmm. Let's go ahead and take care of number one first and make sure our object paints properly. We're going to go up to our backpack. We're going to go to our pattern painter and import it. Let's instantiate an object here. We're going to go pattern painter. My pattern painter equals a new pattern painter. After that, let's set the paint because remember we have to set the paint of our pattern painter. And let's set it to 100 again. That seemed to work out pretty good for us last time. And let's paint our mural in white. Now, when I hit run, I should get my sprite to appear and then paint the pattern all the way down. I'm going to speed this up. Let's see if that works. Oh, we got a spelling error, kids. Classic roads. We got our pattern to successfully paint. Let's go ahead and call our background painter and see if it doesn't do the first row that we called. This one's going to be called background painter and that's going to be called my background painter. And that's a new background painter. We're going to go down and let's do the same thing that we did for my pattern painter, my background painter. And we're going to set the paint to a hundred and let's paint blue. Don't forget we are calling paint background. and white Oop. and blue. Let's see if we get our sprite to paint straight across. And it looks like our sprite painted exactly like we thought. Now we just have to get it to go to the next row. Let's go to our background painter subclass and let's add a new next row. Let's take a look at the code we did from lesson number 13. I think we can use a good majority of this code again. So what I'm going to do here is I am just going to go to that code, copy and paste it and use that as a rough framework. So I'm going to go to pattern painter, and I'm going to go down to next row, copy all of this code, come back here, paste that in. And I'm just going to call this one paint to next row. And as long as it can move, it's going to move. And if it's facing east, we're going to 
turn right. And then it's going to move, 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 move down. One, two, three, four. And I don't think I need it to move that many times. I think I just need it to really move once because we need to go back and forth. So let's get rid of some of these if can moves. Now I'm going to move once, turn right, and then it should go back across. Same thing here with the left. I should just go down once here instead of twice and then turn left again. Let's go ahead and test this and see what happens. Hmm. It stopped there. I wonder why. Well, kids, we wrote this beautiful code. We haven't actually called it yet. And where do we want to call it? Well, after it moves this time, we want it to see if it can move to the next row. So let's put paint to next row here. Let's go ahead and see if this gets it moving the other way. Oh. Looks like we ran into an infinite loop. We didn't give it any ending requirements and it just kept going back and forth. I think we're going to have to add one of those if we can move south, go to the next row commands. Let's go ahead and see if that fixes it. If I go right here and put if can move and we're going to put south right there, then we're going to move to the next row. Let's get rid of that one. Come down here and put another curly Q. Clean this up a little. Now it should stop when it gets to the end. Well, let's see if that works. Well, that did work. It looks like we don't have enough paint on our paint bucket, so we're gonna have to go increase that number. Also, I want you to notice anytime it moves, it doesn't seem to paint. I think we can put a little piece of code here to fix that. And if we're gonna put down a paint color, we also have to pass that paint color. So now we have to put a parameter here. And since we're putting a parameter here, do not forget to add that to your other parts of code. If you look, my first little command here, if I can't move, that's exactly where this is happening at. And I bet if I tell it, if is on paint, and I don't know, want to know if it's on paint. I want to know if it's not on paint. And if it's not on paint, you know what I want it to do, kids? I want it to paint whatever color we're passing along. I think now that should paint all the squares there. Let's go back up here and let's set this to 300 to make sure. Let's go ahead and run and see if this paints all the colors in the background. Mm -hmm. 
Look how beautiful that is, kids. I think our methods worked pretty well. Key takeaways. Key takeaways, kids, for this lesson, really, again, going back to that fundamentals of the anatomy of Java, understanding how to write methods, method signatures, constructors, constructor signatures, understanding why we use the keyword super is all necessary in order to really advance for the rest of this class. This really is the last lesson before you're turned over to create your own pattern. I really encourage you, if you don't understand this, come talk to me. Let me know so we can talk. I hope you found this video helpful in completing your background painter. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come talk to me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.